Hello dear students. So as I already said by the those are called as invertebrates. Second one is what? Presence of dorsal tubular nerve cord. The notochord is present only in the larval tail. If you remember in my first class where I explained the general classification of animal kingdom. Welcome back to session 11 of this very interesting chapter called Animal Kingdom. What did we learn in the last phylum, in the last session? Last session was the last of the phylum Invertebrata. So what are we going to study in today's session? We are going to move on to a very interesting phylum called phylum Chordata. So in today's session, we will be dealing with phylum Chordata. As I said, the whole of the animal kingdom is divided into invertebrates and vertebrates and we have come across the nine invertebrate phyla, starting with phylum Porifera and ending with phylum Echinodermata. So as I already said, why they are, those are called as invertebrates? Because they don't have a vertebral column and certain chordate features, hence they are called as invertebrate or they are otherwise called as lower organisms. Why are they called as lower organisms? Because they don't have a better body organization like what we see in phylum chordata. Now let us see what are the most distinctive features about a phylum chordata. Why, why we call it as higher animals? As I said, chordates are called as higher animals. So what are the most distinctive features of phylum Chordata. Moving on to the first very important is presence of notochord. All of us know invertebrates means what? Without backbone. Vertebrates means what? Chordates means what? Having a notochord which is later on uh, developed into a vertebral column or a backbone. So all of us have a backbone or a vertebral column. And what is the function of this vertebral column or a backbone? It is a supporting structure. Right? Now let us see what is the second, what is the first very important features of chordate characters? They will ask this in examination. This is a very, very important point. So first phylum, that is the first very important chordate character is what? Presence of notochord or it is otherwise called chorda dorsalis. What is it? It is a rod-like supporting structure. It is a rod-like supporting structure. Notochord is present in the embryonic stage. Later on it is transformed into what? Vertebral column or backbone which is going to give a support, a support to the whole body and also a specific shape to the body. So first very important chordate character is what? Presence of notochord or chorda dorsalis. It is a rod like supporting structure present in the embryonic stage and later on it is transformed into what? Or develops into vertebral column or a backbone. This is a very very important chordate character. Second one. Presence of dorsal tubular nerve cord. So second chordate character is what? First one is presence of notochord or chorda dorsalis. Second one is what? Presence of dorsal tubular or tubular means what? Hollow nerve cord. What is it? It is a tubular hollow structure lying above the notochord and extending from the anterior to the posterior end of the body. So what is this dorsal tubular nerve cord? It is a tubular and hollow structure lying above the notochord and extending from the anterior to the posterior end of the body. And the anterior part develops into what? As we know the anterior part develops into brain and the posterior part develops into a spinal cord. Very very important part of the skeletal system we call it as the uh, we, uh, we call it as a nervous system that is spinal cord. So what is it? Presence of dorsal tubular nerve cord and it is a tubular and hollow structure lying above the notochord and extending from the anterior to the posterior end of the body and the anterior part develops into brain and the posterior part develops into a spinal cord. So second very important chordate character is what? First very important chordate character is presence of notochord. Second one is what? Presence of of dorsal tubular nerve cord. Two very important, three very important presence of pharyngeal gill slits. Right. So here you can see the notochord. Right. So dorsal nerve cord, gill slits in pharynx. Right. So notochord, this is in the embryonic stage. As I said, it will be notochord. Later on, uh, as the animal develops, it is transformed or develops into what? Vertebral column or a backbone. So what is the first very important chordate character? Presence of notochord. Second one is what? Presence of dorsal tubular nerve cord. 
What is the third very important characteristic feature? Presence of pharyngeal gill slits. Presence of first one is what? Presence of notochord. Second one is what? Presence of dorsal tubular nerve cord. Third one is what? Presence of pharyngeal gill slits or also you can call it as clefts. What are they? They are, they are, these are paired gill slits in the pharyngeal region present in the embryonic stage. So what are these? These are paired gill slits in the pharyngeal region present in the embryonic stage. So these three are very very important chordate characters. So what are the three chordate characters? One is what? Presence of notochord. Second one is what? Presence of tubular nerve cord. Third one is what? Presence of pharyngeal gill clefts. So these three are very very important chordate characters which you need to remember. So as I said the whole of the animal kingdom is broadly classified into two main. What is it? One is called invertebrates and phylum vertebrate. Vertebrate comes under phylum chordata. Invertebrate phyla you have studied about nine phylas. So vertebrate five classes you are going to study. So what are the three very important chordate characters? Presence of notochord, the presence of notochord in the embryonic stage. Later on it is transformed into a vertebral column or a backbone. Presence of tubular nerve cord. Presence of pharyngeal gill slits. What are the other chordate characters? They are bilaterally symmetrical. Already I have explained in each and every phyla. Bilaterally symmetrical. That is you can cut the body into two equal halves in one plane. They are triploblastic animals. The body wall is made up of three germinal layers. Outer ectoderm, inner endoderm and middle mesoderm. They are silomates. So the silomic uh, the silom is lined by their true silomates. That is, uh, the silom is lined by a mesoderm. And they have closed circulatory system. What do you mean by closed circulatory system? He has studied that in lower organisms, most of them will have what? Open circulatory system where the blood flows from the heart and the cells and the tissues are directly bathed in it. But here, the closed circulatory system is what? There is a supply of blood through blood vessels. So from the heart, the blood is supplied to the different blood vessels. From there on, it is supplied to the different parts of the body. And they are characterized by the presence of post anal tail. So they are, this is also a very important chordate feature. That is, they are characterized by the presence of post anal tail. And they are also characterized by the presence of ventral heart. Other than the three very important chordate characters, what are the other characters? They are bilaterally symmetrical triploblastic animals, they are silomates, they have closed circulatory system, they are characterized by the presence of post anal tail, they are characterized by the presence of uh, what ventral heart. So these are all the very important chordate characters. Hope you have understood. This is a very very important uh, uh, concept to be learned from examination point of view. They might ask for um, like oh, what are the chordate characters. Explain with examples. So you will understand better when we go for the general classification of phylum chordata. Right. Next. Subphyla as I said it is divided into uh, three subphylas that is urochordata and cephalochordata. Whereas that is urochordata and cephalochordata are, to, are called as what? Protochordates. Proto means what? First chordates to evolve. Right. So subphylum urochordata and cephalochordata are often called as what? Protochordates. So what are the characteristic features of these then? They are exclusively marine. Here you can see in the picture. They are exclusively marine. And in urochordata, notochord is present only in the larval, in the larval tail region. So in case of urochordata, you find that the notochord is present only in the larval tail region. Next, so what is the first very important character? They are exclusively marine forms. In urochordata, notochord is present only in the larval tail region. And in cephalochordata, notochord is extended from the head to the tail region and, and in present throughout the and is present throughout the throughout their life. So in cephalochordata, notochord is extended from the head to the tail region and is present throughout the throughout their life. What are the examples you are going to give? Eurochordata, you can give example of Acidia, Salpa, Doliolum, 
and cephalocordata you can give an example of branchiostoma that is amphioxus or landslide so salpa is an ex classical example for urocordata and amphioxus is an example for cephalocordata this is all about the uh, euro subphyla is called urocordata and cephalocordata so so what are the very important characteristic features they are exclusively marine as i said urocordata and cephalocordata together are called as what protocordates what is the very important characteristic feature they are exclusively marine and in urocordata notochord is present only in the larval tail region and in cephalocordata notochord is extended from head to tail region and is present throughout their life examples for urocordata acedia salpa doliolum cephalocordata branchiostoma amphioxus or it is also called as lancelet Moving on to the general classification of phylum Chordata. Hope you remember in my first class where I explained the general classification of animal kingdom. Moving on to the specific classification of phylum Chordata. The whole of the phylum Chordata, as I said, it is divided into hemichordata, urochordata, cephalochordata, and vertebrata. Right now, again, vertebrata is again broadly classified into agnatha and gnatha stomata. Why again? What if now we are very much concentrating on this very important subphyla called vertebrata? Vertebrata is again broadly classified into agnatha and gnatha stomata. What do you mean by agnatha? Jawless, without teeth, without without teeth. Here gnatha stomata with teeth. So jawed animals. You can also use the word called jawed animals, jawless animals. Agnatha means what? Jawless animals. Gnathostomata with jaw. That is gnathostomata means with jaw. So I repeat phylum chordata is divided into subphyla called hemichordata, urochordata, cephalochordata and vertebrata. Vertebrata is again broadly classified into two groups. What are the agnatha and gnathostomata? What is the basis for classifying vertebrata into agnatha and gnathostomata based on the presence or absence of teeth, jaw? Jaw without, uh, without jaw, the animals without jaw, jawless animals are called what? Agnathostomates. And those animals with jaw are called as what? Gnathostomata with jaw. Again, this gnathostomata is divided into two super class. Here, jawless animals comes as cyclostomata. That is, cyclostomata can take an example of petromyzon. Petromyzon. Cyclostomata, petromyzon. Agnatha, only one class is included under agnatha. That is, Cyclostomata, that is animals without jaw. Those animals which have jaw, that is Gnathostomata, is divided into two superclasses. One is called superclass fishes and the other one is called superclass tetrapoda. One, two. This also one into two. This is divided into only one class. Here it is divided into two class. I repeat, vertebrata is again broadly classified into Two groups. One is called Agnatha and other one is called Gnathostomata. What is the basis? Based on the presence or absence of teeth or jaw. Jawless animals or animals without teeth, they are called as Agnatha. Gnathostomata are the group of animals which have teeth. That is Gnathostomates. Right? And only one class is included under Agnatha called Cyclostomata. Gnathostomata is again broadly classified into two. Super class one called fishes and super class called tetrapoda. I think all of you know fishes. Fishes means fishes. Tetrapoda means what? Tetra means what? Four legged animals. Four legged animals come under tetrapoda. Now again, class super class fishes is again broadly classified into two subclasses. It's divided into two subclasses. One is called, what is the basis for classifying fishes again into two subclasses based on the nature of endoskeleton. Based on the nature of endoskeleton. What do you mean by based on the nature of endoskeleton? If the endoskeleton, endoskeleton is made up of two. One is cartilage and the other one is called bone. Cartilage is called soft bone and bone is hard and rigid, hard and rigid. So again 
super class uh, super class fishes is broadly classified into two sub classes one is called sub class chondrichthys and sub class osteichthys what is the basis for classifying them into two sub classes based on the nature of the endoskeleton if the endoskeleton is made up of cartilage soft bone they are called as chondrichthys so here the endoskeleton is made up of cartilage here osteichthys means the endoskeleton is made up of bone here the endoskeleton what do you mean by endoskeleton exoskeleton outside the body endoskeleton inside the body the skeletal system that is found inside the body you call it as endoskeleton so here the endoskeleton is made up of cartilage then we call it as class chondrichthys then if the endoskeleton is made up of bone you call it as osteichthys bony fishes are called osteichthys cartilaginous fishes are called chondrichthys hope you have understood so nathostomata is divided into two super class one is called fishes the other one is called tetrapoda fishes again are broadly classified into two sub classes what are they chondrichthys and osteichthys what is the basis for classifying them into chondrichthys and osteichthys based on the nature of the endoskeleton that is the skeletal system found inside so there are two types of endoskeleton one is called cartilage the other one is called bone bony so if the endoskeleton is made up of cartilage soft bone you call it as cartilaginous fishes then if the endoskeleton is made up of bone you call it as osteichthys hope you have come across a very wonderful fish called shark shark comes under chondrichthys right now we are moving on to class so there is one more super class called tetrapoda as i said tetrapoda means what four legged animals they have been broadly classified into five classes or uh, that is four classes class amphibia class reptilia class apes and class mammalia so what are the four uh, sub class so four classes of tetrapoda one is called class amphibia amphibians are what amphibia means a frog is a classical example of amphibia amphibians means what those animals which can live both on land as well as in water are called amphibians creeping animals class reptilia means what crawling animals creeping animals like snakes crocodile etc they are called as reptiles apes they are also what they are nothing but called birds aerial animals mammals which have mammary glands those animals which have mammary gland to feed uh, to feed their young ones with the milk they are called as mammals so this is about the classification so i repeat phylum chordata is divided into four subphyla hemichordata urochordata cephalochordata and vertebrata vertebrata is again broadly classified into agnatha and gnathostomata based on the presence or absence of jaw here agnatha means what jawless animals without teeth and gnathostomata with jaw agnatha has only one class that is class cyclostomata then class that is gnathostomata has two super classes one is called super class fish fishes and the other one is called super class tetrapoda fishes as you know they are aquatic animals tetrapoda means what four legged animals again super class fishes is again broadly classified into two sub classes into two sub classes sub class chondrichthys sub class osteichthys what do you mean by here chondrichthys means endoskeleton is cartilaginous anyhow i am going to explain what is the difference between chondrichthys and osteichthys here the endoskeleton is bony right now super class tetrapoda into four classes what are they class 1 called amphibia class 2 called reptilia class 3 called apes apes can also be called as what birds then class 4 called mammalia so this is about the classification you have to remember this to understand the whole uh, 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 concept about phylum chordata hope you have understood about this session that is about what are the chordate characters and what are how do we classify the whole of the chordata into different uh, super classes super classes into sub classes 
and the whole classification of phylum Chordata. Hope you have understood this session. So I'll be back with some more concepts about uh, the same chapter called Animal Kingdom in the coming session. So till then, thank you and goodbye.